Hi everyone, I'm Felicia Dadas of the Center for Online Evangelism. I'm excited about this series of videos that we're going to be creating. Uh, just, we want something to be on demand to help you with learning what digital evangelism is and how you can begin putting it into practice. We know that the coronavirus has completely changed the world and especially how we minister and share the gospel. And I am so grateful that God has given us the opportunity to have access to technology for most people. Um, and we can still meet the needs of individuals, serve people online, and tell persons about the love of Jesus. And I know that you're watching this video because you are either a pastor and you want to know how you can get your church members engaged in sharing the gospel, how you can connect with them more, or perhaps you are a ministry leader or communication director, and you want to know how to serve effectively. You might also be a regular church member uh, and you want to start your own personal ministry. You recognize that the time is so perfect. It's so right with the numbers of people who are searching online for Bible answers and wanting to learn more about Jesus. You want to uh, step out and allow the Holy Spirit to use you online. So you're just trying to figure out how do I make this happen? So hopefully the series will help you do just that. We are learning how you can make a difference online. And if you see me like switching from looking at you to the side, it's because I have two screens in front of me. Um, so just be aware of that. So what we are going to, the first thing that we're going to do is to set a foundation. I know Sometimes we want to jump immediately into how do I actually do this? How do I set up a YouTube channel or a podcast or a blog or whatever it is? But it's critical to understand the foundation of digital evangelism. We have to understand what it is. So what is digital evangelism? Essentially, it is the method by which church members and leaders use digital means and internet platforms to meet the needs um, of people who are online and to share the gospel with them. And so it's like being Jesus online, you know, his method was to mingle with men, to have compassion on them, to meet their needs and bid them uh, to follow him. We don't, we, we want to build connection. It's not just about creating all this content and pushing out in front of people, but relationship and connection, all of these form a part of digital evangelism. So uh, it's it's way more than just having an online presence. Uh, it's not just about, okay, we have a church. We need to have our church website. That is good, but your website is not the end. Uh, it's a means to an end. It's about using these online tools to help people to foster a closer and a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So here are a few examples of how you can begin practicing digital evangelism. Well, before I go into the examples, I, I want to stress again that there are various um, branches of digital evangelism. Sometimes you might hear terms like search engine optimization, digital marketing, uh, social media advertising. All of these can actually come be a part of, they are a part of digital evangelism. What I am going to um, emphasize more is in terms of content creation how you, uh, as an individual, whatever the Lord is placing on your heart, you want to start creating content, putting it out on there for a specific audience, and then uh, helping to point them to having a relationship with Christ. And then, of course, there are other follow-up strategies that you can implement in order to build stronger relationships. So all of that will come much later. So going back to examples, you can start a blog, a podcast, you can create graphics that you share on social media, you can create audio clips, There can you can also do photos, uh, videos, how-to articles, ebooks, downloadables, e-magazines, and so forth. So there are so many forms of content that you can put out there that would help people know more about Jesus, more about the Bible. And it goes, um, how would I say? goes further or there's more. So it doesn't always have to be that you are doing a video on a Bible study. Perhaps you could be talking about real life, not real life, real life isn't a term. You could talk about things that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's say you're a stay-at-home mom 
and you want to start a YouTube channel about that, helping other stay-at-home moms just navigate through that journey, uh, and then you can use that as a means to share the gospel. I'm going to talk about that a, a little later on when I talk about entering wedge topics. So I just want you to have the understanding that all of these different forms of content don't always have to be outright Bible studies. All right. Uh, so what I want us to look at now is just a quick reminder that the online field is the biggest mission field that we have. And of course, with what has happened with the coronavirus, we see how easy it is now for us to reach out to millions of people all around the world. And so if we want to take the gospel to the ends of the world, if we want to connect with people and build relationships with them, one of the easiest and fastest ways that we can do that is through these online means. There are 2 billion people on Facebook alone. It will be very hard um, to say, you know, that you're going to start something where you personally, physically could reach out to millions of people. You might not be able to do that. However, you can start creating a series of videos or maybe podcasts that you upload. And even while you're sleeping, that content is making its way around the world and you're reaching countless people compared to if you try to do it in person. Remember, digital evangelism does not negate uh, the need for in-person contact. Uh, it's by no means saying that traditional ways of evangelism are now obsolete, but we do recognize that this is a form that we can use. So we know COVID changed everything. Uh, we once were able to worship in person. Um, at the time of this recording, there are some church, there are many churches that are still not able to meet as they used to meet before. And this is why I love how digital evangelism comes into play. Now, before you get started, there are some other things that you need to know that form a part of this foundation for digital evangelism. You need to know your target audience. When you are about to, you know, the, the Holy Spirit impresses you to either start a ministry or maybe you are a church leader and you are looking at how to make your website more relevant or how to make your social media accounts more relevant, you don't want to say, okay, let's just create content because we want to reach everybody. Well, we all know that that is not possible. You need to have a specific group of people uh, that you want to target, that you want to reach. And the reason why you can't say that you're creating content to reach everybody, there are certain things like language barriers, for example, that will make it impossible for your video to reach every single person on the planet different demographics. Uh, so all of those things. So when you have a better understanding of your target audience, who it is that you want to reach, it's easier then for you to create content, to know the language that you use. And when I say language, I'm not just talking about a difference in tongue language, but more so how you're communicating with your audience. A classic example is I train to be a, an elementary school teacher. And the way that I used to teach my kids in third grade and the language that I used was completely different when I was teaching, uh, when I was a graduate instructor at the university level. So that's what I mean in terms of language. How are you communicating with your audience? Knowing your audience also helps you know what kind of follow-up strategy you need to have in place. Are these persons with whom you can connect better through uh, Facebook or Instagram or maybe starting an online small group on Zoom or maybe they want to sign up on an email list, or maybe you want to create a Facebook group. So when you know, so for example, let's say you are creating a YouTube channel for teenagers, hypothetically between the ages of uh, 15 to 18. A follow-up strategy would not be good to say that you're going to create a Facebook group and ask them to join, um, yeah, to join your Facebook group. Why? Because that demographic rarely use Facebook. They're more so on Snapchat or Instagram, for instance. And that goes, that leads into what platform to use. I've seen where some persons make the mistake of thinking, well, I want to get involved in digital evangelism. So I'm just going to create a YouTube channel. Well, the question I would ask is, who are you trying to reach? Are the people you initially want to reach available on that platform? If you want to start 
if you have a youth minister, youth group at your church, and most of them are maybe 16, 17 year olds, and then you start a Facebook page, is your target audience on Facebook? And so that is, those are crucial things that you have to look at, that knowing your target audience helps you to know um, which platform to, to use. Um, so it doesn't, you, you don't wanna just say, I'm gonna create a YouTube channel, who do you want to reach? Um, how are you going to create that channel to reach that demographic? So make sure you spend some time where you sit down and you answer uh, some basic questions about your target audience. How old are they? What's their gender? What's their location? Their background? Their interests? Their fears? Their values? All of these things will help you to know, okay, well, if they are between the ages of 21 and 30. Here are some basic problems that they might have. And if these are the problems that women, let's say you want to create content specifically for women between the ages of 21 and 30, these are the common issues that they have. These are the common fears that they have based on their, um, their background. These are values that they have. Then you know, well, I can create content to meet these needs. I can create a Bible study uh, to meet their needs in, in this way. So just by sitting down and actually writing, I do want you to do this, write down a, just a brief description of your target audience and um, even creating a persona. And that I describe in more detail in our online missionary course. Uh, I walk you through how to create that persona that you will find very helpful when you're creating your content. I think this analogy is great. You don't want to start making content unless you know who you're creating content for. Uh, it's like going to a tailor or a dressmaker and they just start making a, a dress or they make a suit, but they don't take any measurements. What's going to happen? They might come up with a really beautiful dress or a really nice tailored suit, but it's sort of useless because it doesn't fit the measurement of any one person. So you want to have measurements in mind so that the content that you're creating either as a church or as an individual is relevant to your target audience. So this is where I'm going to stop for uh, this session. Uh, in part two, we're going to look further into entering wedge topics. What is it? What does it mean? And how do you implement it in digital evangelism?